I'm so happy to be here and I thank you the organizer so much to be able to describe you what we are doing in this direction of personalizing the electrodes. As uh, you will see later, is everything related to the necessity to stimulate an extended region. So first of all, why? Why would we like to stimulate such a wide region? Um, uh, and uh, then I will simply show you how we are going to do this uh, and if uh, uh, this uh, personalization is really needed. So uh, we uh, are uh, devoting a lot of work in the last years to fatigue in multiple sclerosis, uh, exactly because uh, this uh, symptom is uh, extremely inv invalidating, is considered the most invalidating by half uh, of these patients, uh, and uh, has a clear involvement of the sensory motor structures. In particular, the literature indicates uh, many aspects, uh, all consistent with an excessive excitability of primary and uh, frontal motor areas. In our experience, uh, we uh, investigated deeply uh, in uh, a group of 20 patients, but uh, uh, only with fatigue, all uh, with the different levels of fatigue and very minor uh, um, clinical impairments. So, um, and we investigated the structural and uh, functional features of the primary sensory motor networks. And uh, although we did not find any alteration of the structural features, we observed that uh, there is an alteration in particular expressing in the corticomuscular coherence uh, of these patients uh, correlating with uh, the fatigue. So we concluded in that uh, paper that uh, an alteration of the communication between the nodes, in particular involving primary motor and sensory areas, occurs much before a structural and even functional alteration of each node appears. Another aspect that we were able to investigate uh, um, using uh, this tool that we developed uh, in the last uh, about 10 years that let us able to um, study the, the activity of specific regions which we identify on the base uh, simply of behavioral features and not uh, resolving the inverse problem. So identification is based on their behavior. But then we are able to observe uh, the activity of these uh, regions in different conditions of interest. And exploiting this tool, we were able to see that uh, an index of intracortical connectivity within uh, primary sensory areas that uh, in, uh, we also observed in healthy people was uh, altered in uh, uh, multiple sclerosis patients. So uh, overall, uh, we had the, mm, the, uh, the notion that uh, in multiple sclerosis fatigue, an excessive alteration of M1 together with a reduced uh, uh, excitability of M1 uh, is uh, um, crucial for this symptom together with uh, an alteration of the communication between S1 and M1. For this reason, we moved from an intervention that has been introduced uh, in healthy people, proving that it was able to enhance endurance to fatigue in healthy subjects, and uh, it was uh, realized through a transcranial direct current stimulation in primary sensory motor areas devoted to the hand, so uh, the typical uh, seven per five uh, uh, square electrode centered about C3, uh, here C4. Uh, controlling the left uh, hand movement, and so move from this uh, intervention, adapting it to multiple sclerosis patients, and uh, our hypothesis was that we want to neuromodulate the whole body as one, since also in multiple sclerosis there is no reason to think to an intervention that uh, uh, concentrate on upper limbs, since both are involved in this pathology. Although we tried to avoid a direct M1 enhancement. To do this, we uh, developed a procedure that starting from individual uh, MRI, projects uh, the central sulcus on the scalp and creates uh, electrodes that uh, are shaped as uh, the projection of uh, the um, central sulcus on the head. And then we use uh, 
and in the neural navigation even to, per, to position this electron, uh, in particular using five millimeters above the central sulcus and 1.5 above. So these strips are two centimeters wide and let uh, us able to match the cortical folding of individual patient. As you see here, there is uh, quite uh, a relevant uh, differences in the shape of these uh, strips. And what uh, we are trying, uh, uh, and what uh, an aspect I will describe to you directly now, is uh, are these uh, individual shape useful or it is enough uh, to shape a strip that uh, mm, goes along the, the, the classical uh, landmarks to, over, uh, to, to be over M1, so a strip that goes through C3, CZ, and C4. Uh, we are managing this uh, um, using the great uh, collaboration with the Maron Bixon lab at uh, City College of New York. And in this case, uh, we are uh, trying to um, approach uh, through modeling uh, the position of the electrodes. In particular, we are uh, optimizing uh, the position of uh, the personalized electrode and also considering uh, whether other uh, reference positions are relevant. And we also approach the comparison between personalized and standard or non-personalized electrode with uh, the group of Parazzini in Milan. But here, I simply uh, want to show you that, that uh, we compared from an experimental point of view the personalized and the non-personalized electrodes in uh, uh, 12 people. Uh, we exploited a paradigm that I think is very interesting to set up uh, transcranial electric stimulation features, and in particular is, uh, has been introduced in 2011 in the Journal of Neuroscience uh, from the group of Simone Rossi and uh, Mauro Feura, and uh, we produce the transcranial alternate current stimulation across the electrodes uh, having put in on the electrode the uh, transcranial coil. Uh, in particular, in this paradigm, you, uh, we uh, came back, let's say, to the rounded coil that is uh, not so much used uh, nowadays, exactly because we wanted to test together the lower and upper uh, limbs representation, uh, ensuring that no uh, coil position can affect the uh, MEP response. So we used a rounded coil overcoming the, uh, transcranial, uh, the transcranial electrode, the transcranial current electrode, and we switched on and off the alternate current stimulation while collecting TMS. So we have a baseline and a, a, a neuromodulated uh, MEP that is collecting um, transcranial magnetic stimulation responses while the transcranial current, uh, alternate current um, stimulation was off or on. We uh, collected this data while positioning the personalized electrode and in a second uh, part of the session, positioning the non-personalized electrode. For this reason, we think that having used a rounded coil, it was a good uh, um, solution to be sure that the coil position does not uh, have uh, relevant effects. Mm, furthermore, we are collecting together lower and upper limb responses so that we in at one uh, shot, uh, are able to observe that. Uh, here you see uh, a superimposition and the mean of uh, the responses from the four limbs, so the upper limbs and the lower limbs of the two body sides, while we were uh, inducing the current through the personalized and through the non-personalized electrodes. What you can see here is that while for the lower limb that was uh, the region more central induced the, 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 the stimulation was able to enhance the excitability of M1 both through the personalized and non-personalized um, electrodes. Obviously, you should compare the response when the stimulation is on with respect to those when the stimulation is off. So here, both the electrodes induce an enhancement of the response of the MEP. 
This was not the case for the upper limb, where the personalized in average was able, in average I mean in all subjects, was able to produce the expected enhancement of excitability, while we did not reach a significance of the enhancement through the non-personalized one. So simply, uh, what we um, uh, deduce is that electro personalization is needed to neuromodulate an extracted region. And this is what I wanted to show you, uh, thanking all who was uh, on the base of these experiments, that in particular were Andrea Cancelli and Carlo Cottone. But for sure, also those who Bring, brought me in all the experience that in particular uh, were relevant for the section where we investigated uh, multiple sclerosis fatigue through EG and MEG to understand which are the alterations that we want to compensate and for this reason we built these electrodes. So I thank you for your attention. <laughs>